Today we'll take a look at the Phillips curve and we'll try to explore this question. The theory of the Phillips curve could come in handy when trying to answer a question like this one. Discuss the view that there is no trade-off between inflation and unemployment. And the long-run, short-run trade-off is going to be important here. So what is the Phillips curve and what relationship does it explore? Um, Albin Phillips took a look at some data and uh, derived a relationship between inflation rate and the unemployment rate. He found that there was a relatively stable relationship between inflation and unemployment and that the relationship may have looked something like this. The Phillips curve said that there was the governments basically had a menu of policy choices. If they were to have a low rate of inflation, uh, they would likely to have a higher rate of unemployment. In order to drive down unemployment, governments could make trade-offs and they had a menu of policy choices, but that would result in a higher rate of inflation. You've seen this before, even though you may not recognize it. So let's take a look at the Keynesian ADAS diagram to put this into perspective. Let's switch over to the Keynesian ADAS diagram for a moment and take a look. If you can bear with me here on the liberties that I've taken with this video and leaving out some of the labels and minor details, if you take a look and you look at where, look at where we are on the ADAS diagram right here. What does that tell us? Well, it tells us we are below full employment output, which is over here in the vertical part of the AS curve. Uh, we're below full employment output, and uh, correspondingly, we also have little pressure on the price level. Uh, the problem with this diagram here is it's not a dynamic graph, it's a static graph, but you can intuit that there's a, a lack of pressure on the price level here. So does government have a quote-unquote menu of choices uh, of where to be on this Phillips curve? Well, let's take a look. If we are to grab this AD curve and you know that through government policy, an increase in spending or redu reduction in taxes, government can raise AD. So if we were to try to raise AD, let's see if we can do that here, as we move up this curve, could we lower unemployment? And what would the cost be? As you can see, we're moving closer and closer towards full employment output, but we're also putting pressure on the price level. Again, please forgive my lack of detail and connecting that to the y-axis here. What does that look like over here? Well, we've driven down the level of unemployment, so we would move along this axis here. We'd be moving along the Phillips curve. What has the trade-off been? Well, we've raised the inflation rate. Again, we're moving along this Phillips curve. So the data that uh, Albin Phillips found showed that this was a relationship, and there was a lot of evidence to support this. Now, that's a short-run trade-off there's a problem in the longer run. Let's take a look. The longer run trade-off on the Phillips curve, uh, basically the relationship breaks down in the longer run. And it may be more easy to and more clear to illustrate this through the neoclassical ADAS model. Let's take a look. So Phillips found that there was a relationship between inflation and unemployment. Um, as you intend to lower the level of unemployment, you'll pay for that with a higher rate of inflation. And he found that to be true in the short run. That began to break down in the longer run. And here's why. Or here's a possibility as to why. In the neoclassical model, we can see that in the, in the long run, we're always going to get back to the full employment level of output. And importantly, workers don't have a monetary illusion. Uh, they're under no illusion. Uh, they're paying attention to their real wages. And when their real wages fall or rise, uh, the economy will react. And that's going to be important in the long run Phillips curve relationship. If we were to say that there were, uh, we wanted to drive down the level of unemployment below the natural rate of unemployment, let's assume that we're somewhere along the curve here. Again, please forgive my, uh, my liberties here. So if, if the government decided that they would be happy to settle for a higher rate of un uh, inflation and wanted to drive employment down below the natural rate of unemployment, what could they do? I think you know what they could do. What they could try to do is to increase aggregate demand. So you can see aggregate demand shifting from the uh, original curve to the new curve. How could they do that? Uh, they have a number of choices available to them. Uh, you may know what they are. Monetary policy, uh, fiscal policies, including increasing government spending or reducing taxes. So where are we now? Well, now we are at a new level of output. So indeed, we're beyond full employment output. Uh, and what have we done here? We have put pressure on the price level. 
So we've raised the average price level. What would that look like on the Phillips curve? Well, we've lowered the unemployment rate, and we've given, uh, made that trade off again uh, for a higher rate of inflation. Now, here's where the relationship begins to break down. What's going to happen next? What has happened to real wages? At this price level, real wages have fallen. So the next round, workers are going to take and make an effort to bid up real wages. And let's take a look at what happens next. What will happen as workers bid up real wages is SRES will begin to shift to the left because the costs of production are going to rise, which will shift SRES to the left. What that's going to mean is uh, real output is going to begin to fall again. So we'll get back to the full employment level of output. Now, in the beginning, workers had an inflationary expectation, uh, and that helped. That inflationary expectation helped everybody understand where they stood. So at some given level of unemployment, there was still some inflation, as we can see along this curve. Now what the government has done is they've distorted that. So they've introduced inflation. Uh, workers' real wages have fallen. Workers have tried to bid up real wages. So what have we done? At a higher rate of inflation, we've driven down unemployment temporarily. Again, going from YFE to a higher level of output, we've reduced unemployment to some extent. As real wages go up, what do employers do? Uh, they begin to uh, lay off workers. So what we've done now is at a higher rate of unemployment, we have uh, created an incentive for employers to lay off workers so we're going to return to a higher rate of unemployment, but we're going to do that at a higher rate of inflation. So in the longer run, and especially in the 1970s, uh, the Phillips curve relationship began to break down. So what I've tried to show here is that when we look at the Phillips curve, there is a relationship uh, in the short run. Government does have policy choices available. They can lower the rate of unemployment, uh, with given the trade-off for higher inflation in the short run. In the longer run, uh, there's evidence to say that since workers don't have a money illusion, government's going to be hard-pressed. Basically, it won't be able to drive employ uh, unemployment below the natural rate of unemployment. Um, and if they try to, the only thing that's going to result is inflation. So in terms of this question, discussing the view that there is no trade-off between inflation and unemployment, the Phillips curve does show that there is a relationship in the short run, and in the longer run, that relationship breaks down. I've chosen to use a mix of Keynesian and neoclassical models to show this. You may choose to do it a different way. Uh, many thanks to uh, the Ziogas Review Book for helping us prepare this video today.